Sample number 2 for internal force convection. So we have a, a pipe here, a water enters a 2.5 cm internal. So internal meaning inside diameter of this pipe is 2.5 cm. This is a copper tube. This is a heat exchanger actually because water as water enters at a rate of 15, at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, and at a mass flow rate of 0.3 kg per second, this water is being heated by an outside steam, a very hot steam at 120 degrees Celsius, heating the water that comes in to 115 degrees Celsius. The, the average heat transfer coefficient is given at 800 watts per meter square degree Celsius. So we need to determine the length of this tube required to heat the water to 15 degrees Celsius. So again, this is a heat exchanger between a steam, a very hot steam, exchanging its heat to the water so that the water's temperature will increase from 15 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. So these are some of the assumptions. So first, steady operating conditions exist. The fluid properties are constant. Convection heat transfer coefficient is also constant. Conduction resistance of the copper tube is negligible. So we neglect, we assume that there is no conduction that happens at the surface here. Uh, since this pipe is a very uh, thin copper tube, such that the inner surface temperature of the tube is equal to the condensation temperature of the steam. So there is no change of temperature of the steam as it passes through this very thin uh, wall of this particular tube. So this, those are our assumptions to simplify our solutions. The properties are so evaluated at the bulk mean temperature so we need to average the temperature of the water in, from inlet to outlet so inlet plus outlet divided by 2 so that is 65 degrees celsius then finding cp at that temperature using the table at 65 degrees celsius our cp is 4187 so 4187 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. The heat of condensation of steam. So we will also find the enthalpy of condensation of the steam. So the steam is given at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. So we, we will evaluate the condensation of, of this particular steam. So this steam will condense because of this because of the exchange of temperature of this hot steam with the water, it will condense. So what is the condensation, uh, heat of condensation? So we can find that at the steam temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, looking at the, the value of H. So, so we we'll look for the value of, so the enthalpy of vaporization is also equal to the heat of condensation. Diba? We know that in thermodynamics. So heat of vaporization, the HFG. So this is the temperate, the the enthalpy of uh, wherein the 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 phase will change from steam to water or from water to steam. So vice versa. So they're just equal. So that's why we have two thousand two hundred three kilojoules per kilogram. So now we need to find the the length of the tube required so that this temperature of 115 degrees Celsius will be achieved. So from our previous example, we learned that the, the heat coming from the steam will cause the temperature of the water to rise. So obviously, MCP delta T is because of the, the heat convected by the water from this particular steam. So putting that into equation, MCP delta T of the water is equals to the heat convected. So H, A, S, 
delta uh, LMTD or the logarithmic mean temperature difference. So later on, we will analyze uh, why is it that it's delta LN here? Why is it that it's not the normal delta T? So where our surface area is pi D L. So substituting that, so to the surface area here, so this equation will become H pi D L delta T LN or the LMTD. Rearranging to find the value of L since we are looking for L. So this is our equation coming from this one. It become like this. So MCP T exit minus T inlet divided by H pi delta T LN. M dot is given, CP is given, TE is given, T inlet is given, H is given, pi is obviously, and then we have diameter is given. So we just have to look for delta LN. So del what's delta LN? So let's go back to slide number 21. So let's briefly discuss what do we mean by why is it that we will evaluate the temperature at delta LN. Actually, that is not only the case. We can evaluate this formula by using delta T average, which is equals to Ts minus T, T mean. Or the surface temperature minus the, the mean temperature. But since the mean temperature is changing, we will evaluate it. We can evaluate it using this two. Delta T. So any of this will be applicable. So you can use the arithmetic mean temperature, which, which is delta T average AM. So which is you need to evaluate Ts minus t mean at the inlet minus ts minus t exit or use the logarithmic mean temperature difference which is which can give us an exact representation of the average temperature difference between the fluid and the surface unlike this one the first one it cannot give the exact or acceptable results because delta tm varies in the tube so your TM varies in the tube. That's why we use LMTD. LMTD is an exact representation of the average temperature that we can use in this equation here. So what is the formula for LMTD if this is a more exact representation of the average temperature? So this is the, this is the two ways by which you can solve for LMTD. It can be T inlet minus T exit divided by LN of the, the quotient of this temperature difference or delta T exit minus delta T inlet divided by LN delta T exit divided by delta T inlet. It, actually, th these are just the same because when we say delta T, this refers to T surface minus T at the Exit for example. So this is your delta T E. For delta T I, that is T S. Because the surface temperature is constant. T I. So you can use whichever is more comfortable for you. So going back. Solving for delta T L N. So we will use this formula in finding delta T L N logarithmic mean temperature difference again this is an exact representation of the average temperature along the length of the tube so delta t exit so that is the surface temperature minus the exit temperature so ts minus t exit minus delta t inlet which is ts minus t inlet divided by so the same 120 minus 115 divided by 120 minus 15. So this, the whole term is being eval being evaluated by this. So solving for delta T L N, that's why we have 32.846 degree Celsius. So this is our exact representation of the temperature along the length of this, the the, the average temperature along the length of this particular tube. So substituting delta T L N from our previous equation in terms of length, now we can solve for the 
length that is 60.86 meter.